Now on Gaming Called Podcast, two dogs argue over newspaper. <laughs> clip show. 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 From across all corners of our fair planet Earth, welcome to the Gaming Cult Podcast. Worldwide opinions on obscure and up to date gaming talk culture and be curry for today and yesteryear. You love it, my boy. My boy. Hello and welcome to the Gaming Cult Podcast 2012 Clip Show. You heard that right. Everyone is on break right now, ourselves included, but we did not want to leave you high, high and dry. So uh-huh. we we are presenting to you the best and funniest moments of our first year as the Gaming Cult Podcast 2012. Uh, we have Martin with us. Hello, Martin. Hello, Jake. I, I'm glad to have you here, Martin. Yeah, man, it's good to be here. And we also have Eric Badur. Eric, hello. Howdy. It's been a whole year, gents. I can't believe that. Martin, we recorded the first episode of Gaming Cult Podcast on December the 31st, 2011. Yeah, I thought we did. New Year's Eve morning. Yeah. We'd planned wow. it for a few months, but uh, and then we decided to go ahead with it, and then we did. Yeah. And the first episode went up early January 2012. And it's been a really good year. Hell yes. It's been a hell of a year. Uh, I can't believe how this year has gone. We will have our 2012 roundup uh, with everybody, and we're going to give you our thoughts of 2012 and our best games of the year, best music, and so on. Uh, that'll come in a week or two. That'll be the first episode of uh, 2013. But for now, just to leave you, you know, give give you a little something for the end of the year. We've got a we've got a clip show with uh, our th- with our favorite bits of the Game Call podcast for 2012. I, uh, what's the best way to bring it in, gents? I think probably we'll go with the first time that uh, Eric appeared on the Game Call Podcast, Episode 7, <laughs> Trillennium Cast, number one, Stunners on Deck. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even, like, remember anything that happened on my first episode, except, I think, is that the episode where Martin, where you guys talked about the video game with the cat, and the cat's your boss? Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah, I think this, this might well be the catalyst for what sent us in the direction that we went in with Game and Cult Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Martin, it was all from you. Yeah, it was, surprisingly enough. <laughs> and here we go. Here is that little tidbit from Episode 7. Enjoy. It's called the Convenience Store 200X. No, it's not. <laughs> so it's- but oh, I shit, shit you not. I shit oh you not. Oh my god. Does that mean there's an earlier version, or that was just an <laughs> off-the-cuff number? Oh my god. That is the actual title of the game. Oh. And it's the old... incredible. It was released uh, March 30th, 2006, so it's a really early Xbox 360 game, obviously. Wow. And it was developed that, that, by... That's when nobody in the world... Yeah. Nobody in Japan had a 360. Nobody in Japan had a 360, that's right. And it's developed by a company called Masterpiece. <laughs> hey, fucking appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? No kidding. Japan makes some cool stuff. That's... I mean, way to go, oh. guys. I, ha- I haven't even mentioned the cat game for the yes! week. <laughs> yes, that is what I was going to. Okay. Martin, All right. please talk about Eric. this Wii game. Talk about uh, talk about the uh, we we have to. This is a very important detour. We have to take it. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm very you, excited. You'll see. Uh, tell of the folklore of this game first. <laughs> the folklore of the game is that it was released, I think, two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, in Japan, and for the Nintendo Wii. For the Nintendo Wii, correct? And it's a Japanese exclusive, obviously, and it didn't sell more than 100 copies. <laughs> this is how poorly this game did. What yeah. now, what kind of ga- what kind of game is it? 
I'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. Oh, I'm very excited. Oh, this is good. There's build to it. This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah. The uh, game is called Sukeban Chacho Rena. Uh -huh. And excellent accent. It has, <laughs> it has been brought up um, by a couple of like game blogs and whatnot and has been dubbed the worst selling video game ever. No way. Yes way. <laughs> a video uh, game on the Nintendo Wii in Japan around 100 copies sold. Yeah. Oh my god. And the uh, title loosely translates to Delinquent CEO Rena. What? Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Um, so basically what happens is you work at an office, right? You're, uh -huh. you're like one of those salary men in, mm -hmm. the, yeah. in, <laughs> in Japan. And one day... Mm -hmm. A bunch of cats take over your office. <laughs> what? <laughs> right what? there. Right there. We just doubled the sales for this company. Oh. Gaming Cult Podcast. We have done this for you. Whoa. I need to get this game. Why did nobody... That sounds like it would be Japan's best-selling game. <laughs> yeah. It was too obscure for Japan, even. It, yeah. Like it made a full. It went full fucking circle. Yeah. Wow. So just. What? What? Wait. Hang so on. Ca cats take over the office. And you have to please them, pretty much. Do I as have, they tell you to do. I have so many questions about this <laughs> game. <laughs> how? How do the cats take over? Why do the cats take over? How do you communicate with the cats? What sort of tasks do you have to perform? Is your job title still the same? What happened to the people running the company previous? What the fuck is going well, on in Eric, the game? If you've ever had a cat, you'll know that you don't communicate with cats. No. Ca <laughs> cats communicate with you. Oh my god. I can't even thank you, Martin, so much. <laughs> Martin, my friend. Martin, my co-host. We love we, we we love you so much. I can't even begin to imagine this game cats take over your office like just imagine if that happened uh imagine if you know what i need to do right now it's it's payday today for me i need to go buy a copy of this game right now before i edit and put this episode oh, online yeah so i'm able to get one before they go forever yeah uh, absolutely it's probably a good idea we just made this game we just encouraged this game into the realm of folklore yeah. Uh, imagine that you just had a weekend off and you're like, well, tomorrow's Monday, back to the grind. You drive your car all the way to work, you park, you get out, it's a normal day, you walk in your office, everyone's at their desks like normal, and then they're just cats in suits walking around. Who are these cats? Oh, these are our new bosses. How are the cats <laughs> our new bosses? <laughs> what? Oh my god. You know, I think you're letting your inform your, your, your Im imagination's running away from you there, Eric, as far as I've seen from the one vid promo video that exists that I've seen on YouTube. They are just regular cats that take over your office. But they but do they do talk with you. <laughs> oh my you have to, god. And you have to do their bidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why did not why how did this game not sell better? That is incredible. Wow. No 100 copies around 100 yeah. copies. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. I'm, so I have, there we go. I have to find this game. The title again, please, uh, Martin? Yes, Sukeban Chacho Rena. I'll spell it out as well. S-U-K-E-B-A-N-S-H-A-C-H-O-U-R-E-N-A. Wow. Sukeban Chacho Rena. Wow. Yeah. This is a real thing. All right, I'm going to watch some videos of this when we're done here, because I can't even believe... <laughs> How did this game I'm, not sell better? I I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna I go just beat you to the last. A cat, a cat is wearing a very strange hat and is very upset in this picture. Oh the, man! The cat is suggesting to the salary man, uh, "You have not met your quota for this week. Please go home and commit seppuku immediately." Yeah, uh, this is this is incredible. I'm gonna have to buy this game. We're all gonna have to buy this game. Yeah, no, I'm getting. We it. are. I'm going to beat you guys to the last copy in existence. <laughs> <laughs> the, there will be a future Gaming Cult podcast where for an hour, 
we will only talk about this game and we'll talk <laughs> about different levels. We'll talk about different difficult things that we had to do and yep. nobody will know what we're talking about. Yep, that's right. Uh, that'll, wow. come right off, that'll come right after the Galgun episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, this is incredible. Martin, thank you so much for showing me this game. Uh, no problem. <laughs> thank you, Martin. Uh, my, my Swedish co-host, I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh, man. So, so 128-bit consoles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that certainly was a, uh, that was a magical little clip, wasn't it, guys? It was. I like yep. it. Yep. How did you feel coming on the podcast for the first time, uh, Eric? What were you expecting? Uh, I, I don't really know what I was expecting. Uh, I just like, oh yeah, you want to come do this podcast? I'm like, yeah, sure. The only podcast I've like ever done is the Mega 64 podcast. So uh, doing something that's just audio and not video is really different. And, uh, and it's a completely different format. I mean, we don't talk about fun video games where a cat's your boss on the Mega 64 podcast. We just talk <laughs> about videos that we make. That's so... Cool. It's uh, it's very different, but it's it's a lot of fun. I really like doing the Gaming Cult podcast because I don't, I I, I seriously have no idea where each episode is gonna go. I ha I've just no. We come in with a vague idea of we'll talk about video game news, we'll talk about what we've been playing, we'll recommend an album. Good night. It it goes in so many directions, and I I I love it every single time it is so absurd and gets so weird and we talk about things that don't make any sense i and it's video games i don't know i i really enjoy it thank you for having me and i've been having a great year with the gaming cult podcast well we've we've loved having you here eric and we've loved having our good friends uh garrett hunter and brian abshakra but there was one there is one more we, we, we will go back to our our, our beloved california co-hosts uh in a moment but we must go to our sixth member, and that is a, that is a young sweet boy. Now, Zach, Zach kind of happened by happenstance. Now, Martin, you kind of you went away for an episode or two because you had to deal with some stuff. Yeah. So I thought, okay, well, look, I'll get, I'll take a chance. I'll get, I'll get my little brother to to jump on the show. He jumped on on episode ten, Harry Potter and the Crippled Bitches. <laughs> I just I forget about the names of these episodes. Oh my god, they're so good. In episode ten, uh, Harry Potter and the Crippled Bitches, this was the first appearance by Brian Elby Chakra, my friend, and also of uh, Zach, who I don't think any of us are prepared for at any given time. When he sat in for Martin, who was absent, I did not know what to expect, and what we all got was a discussion of Hutful Boyfriend, which is, uh, is one of Zach's favorite games, and I believe an excellent introduction to the man himself. So take a lesson to Hutful Boyfriend and Zach Innes. Talking about uh, out there games, uh, now this is, this is if, if, if Gaming Cult Podcast excels at anything, it's talking about the absolute lunatic fringe of the video game world. Absolutely. Oh yes. Yeah. Yep. And uh, Zach, Zach might have one to top them all. Uh, really? Zach, please tell us about this game that you have been playing. Gentlemen, Hartful Boyfriend Dating Simulator. Now, <laughs> it's not. It's not like any other dating sim, because. So, in this... Sorry, just just spell that out first. It's. I think it's H A T O F U L Boyfriend. Correct. Hartful Boyfriend. What what could this what could this game be about just from that title? Well, guys, what round table? What would you think this game is about first? Uh, I would assume it's about getting a boyfriend. But is Zach playing a game where you have to get a boyfriend? <laughs> uh, well, po possibly. Uh, Garrett, what um, would you think? I would think most of the dating sims are for a male audience, and the majority of the male audience is straight, so I don't... I think maybe you're a very loving and caring and heart... F like, you're full of heart and character, and you're the boyfriend looking for a girlfriend. Uh, Brian? Uh, I would, I would say that it's a dating sim to make you a better boyfriend. Ooh! That's a good Ooh, one. That is. 
uh, right, so I would like to proceed, I would like to, uh, prefix everything that you <coughs> have just said with a big fuck you, and Zach, please tell everybody what this <laughs> game is about. Guys, you're all wrong, because in this game, I'm dating birds. It's... <laughs> it's oh my god. <laughs> that, that might be... I'm like 26. That might be one of my favorite sentences I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. You're all wrong, because I'm dating birds. I'm dating birds. <laughs> fuck you, it's birds for me. More well, than what one. the fuck? The setting is, the whole, most of the world, or human population, has been wiped out by bird flu. Or something similar, some similar virus. And so, the birds take over, logically. And you're one of the only Logically! And you're the hunter and you're and they refer to you as a hunter gatherer. Now, you go to this school where all the other birds go and all your bird sweethearts go as well. And there's just a bunch of very strange characters and the game is very odd. Sometimes it takes itself very seriously, but at other times it doesn't at all. But what I hung on to or well, if you guys want to play it at any point in time, I'm not gonna ruin anything. <laughs> So yeah. Oh no, just Wait. total total spoiler alert for this game. This game is only in Japanese. There is yeah. there oh, are it, there are written translations online, but just know that we are going to spoil the hell out of this game out. for the sake of entertainment. <laughs> Alright. So amongst other like activities that you do, such as looking at birds in maid outfits and such, there's Oh my god. Pigeons. Pigeons, oh. in fact. Doves. Oh Doves and sometimes a red quick like red crested bird as well. So, oh, there's a large variety. You don't have to pick from, you know, the same looking birds. But um, the the final, the ending is just mind blowing. Your your or well, one of the endings, one of the possible endings. Each run through is about 30 minutes, but you will eventually get to this one, and this just makes the entire game worth it. There is a romance option who is Doctor Shu. Now, it turns out. He really likes you, as in really likes you and wants to store your head in a jar. And so- Holy f Sorry guys, it's my dog. Um- Is your dog a dinosaur? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That was some Jurassic Park shit what right there from Molly. What the fuck Marley. goes on Holy down god. under? <laughs> That's our dogs. They're huge. They're about like two meters tall. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you get to this Dr. Shrew section and- he wants your head in a jar. Now, I don't know how a pigeon uses a knife or, you know, does any of these things, but if you play your cards right and date the right person called Angel... You mean the right pigeon? The right pigeon. Yeah. Yes, the right pigeon, correct. They will come along at the last second. And, it, of course, it, usually it's a sweet piano ballad playing throughout the whole thing. However, suddenly boss music comes on, absolutely changes, some kind of thrash music comes on, starts blasting out of nowhere. All the stats that you've been building up over the game to date people actually become different stats. And it just turns into this full-on end boss battle RPG. And I was, What?! Yes! Th I thought exactly the same thing. It is so hard to put in words because I just sat there for a solid five minutes looking at the screen thinking, what the fuck am I playing? I mean, I could accept dating pigeons, I could accept them <laughs> in outfits, I could accept that one could beat me in a running race, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, wait, no, not... Uh, the bird did not take to flight, but instead beat you in a running race. Yep, there's, um, it is a school, so we all do run track, and they beat me in track. <laughs> Can I point one thing out? Yes. Uh, the birds get bird flu, and then they give it to humans, and it wipes all the humans out because bird flu kills you. Well, so if birds transmit the bird flu, how are they not all dead? I have no clue. <laughs> that's the part, Garrett, that's the part you're going to yeah. pick apart, is the bird flu. Not the <laughs> birds, not like boat does... racing birds. You got Doesn't you're you're like you're real hung up on. Well, wouldn't all the birds be dead? Yeah. It's Gar Garrett getting excited by natural disasters again. <laughs> it's um. Well, I want to play Tokyo Jungle now. It's expansion, or well, in the complete edition that you can get, it does explain it. There's one bird in particular who spreads it out, and he's all cute and adorable and things like that. Although I th I found it, like that 
I was attracted to many of the birds throughout my playing experience. I started you, with the just you personally. Yeah, they you, they grew. You as, a, you as a man was were attracted to these birds. They grew on me. They were just <laughs> charming. And there was one in particular that had a blonde mohawk and some. Oh my god. <laughs> And it was, like, it was yeah, every sex. definition of a bad dude. <laughs> and, uh, a rich girl like me, uh -huh. I get a lot of pocket money from my parents, so I wasn't sure whether he was going to mug me at that stage, but they seemed to just leave after that, so I was like, oh, right, I'm in love with that one. But, wait, wait wow. you're a girl? You're a girl yeah, wait, bird? hang on, yeah, you're a girl bird? Yeah, you're a, no, you're not a bird, you're a girl human. This is oh, what, what the, the what fuck? fuck? Oh, so wait, what? So that that was a very big point that you left out there, Zach. So the the, oh my the God. you play the protagonist, <laughs> you play the protagonist of a human female. Yes. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you give any of them a bird job? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to not involve <laughs> most of them, as I really, I mean, as much of me that want to see. Bare na butt naked birds. It, right. You're just not that kind of girl. Yeah. I'm just not that kind of girl. Although a lot did lightly, like, it was described as them lightly caressing me, and I don't know how a bird caresses an individual, but it it like but, flips the little tips of its wings on her um, <laughs> secret spot, probably. On the on the man in the boat. Yeah. Did, did you did you play with any of the boy birds peckers? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's a good question. Is there a woodpecker? Oh, fuck. No, there are no woodpeckers, sadly. Oh, why did anybody make this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I so, probably encourage you all to play. Well, we're not you, you, you've got us on the edge of our seat here. Um, you were talking... We're going to go back to this game in more detail, but you, you've got to continue about this uh, the crux of the game when you're at it. Reaching, you're at, you're at the boss battle. Oh, so what, what, oh what, yeah. Oh, what actually happens is, you're he, you meet him down in his kind of dungeon thing, because it's this he guy. He has a dungeon. Yeah, this this guy has a dungeon, and he's a Wait, professor, okay. and he's. Is all, this, it, it's it's a human or is it a bird? No, no, no this is a bird. This is a bird. <laughs> <laughs> no, you idiot! It's a bird. <laughs> Just assume all characters besides the protagonist are birds, because that's that's the, that's what it is. That's the gist of it. And so you go downstairs and to this guy's dungeon, and then he starts professing his love for you. Now, what's really weird is Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy plays throughout whenever you're in that dungeon. So I'm already a bit creeped out. This isn't the best seductive music. It's no Barry White. And so he starts describing. Well, he makes you a roast dinner. Now, this is a roast Wait, dinner. Was it made of a bird? Exactly. It's made of your love interests. Oh! oh! Up. That's like M. Night Shyamalan shit. Yeah, it is. And, was, and I'm sitting here horrified. And then he goes, I've taken great interest in you, but I can't keep you around forever. But I can. I'm like, how does that make sense? <laughs> and, then, and then suddenly, apparently he holds you at knife point and says he's going to cut off your head. Uh, wait, no, hang on. Uh, okay. What kind of a bird is this? This is a, um, I can't quite remember. It's... It's quite a large puffy bird. It's like a. Is it revealed that it's... the bird? Is yes. it revealed that the bird with somehow opposable thumbs that is holding a knife to your neck is the same bird that also beat you in a running race earlier on? <laughs> that, no, that one was a pigeon. This one is actually a finch. It's a... Oh, what? I, so a finch, which is smaller somehow, yeah, yeah. is able yep. to wield a blade. Is yep. it like a special, like er ergonomically designed for birds kind of knife, or is it just like does it show the knife and it's just a knife? You don't really get to see it because you just they want they want as much bird on the screen as all time. We can't, <laughs> we can't have knives to this guy. So it starts and then if you if you get the bad ending by just ending up with him, he kills you. And like screen flashes red and it's just game over. You suck. Bad news. You can't That's date sad. birds. It's <laughs> You're just a bad bird dater. You're just a bad bird dater. You don't know how to Coo, then, so to speak. Oh! <laughs> Zach, my brother, I love you so much. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. But, um, yeah, it's just, please, try and play it. It's... But, but that's not the ending that you play for. 
What's the what's like the ending that you went for? Like, what's like the good ending? Yeah. Well, the ending that you win for is if all ends well, your bird boyfriend <laughs> walks you home and lightly <laughs> pecks you with his beak, <laughs> and it all oh works God. out absolutely spectacular. I mean, you graduate from some pigeon nation, which is the school, <laughs> and it's it's kind of just the same happily ever after thing over and over and over. But, I mean, you find out that a lot of these characters do have bad backstories. For example, one of them's mother is deceased and he does, or missing and he doesn't really, you know, just talk about it all too much and the way to get to his heart is to get him to open up to you. And Oh, uh, this is, I feel kind of gross talking about this. This is... So, wait, wait, wait. The pigeon walks you home. Yes. <laughs> the pigeon walks you home. Does it's it like walk it... so fast that you're like really behind it? Because obviously yeah, yeah. these birds are pretty quick on their feet. Yeah. Do you think that the pigeon boyfriends ever resent you for not being able to fly like them? It's like when you're a kid and that what you're hanging out with that one kid that kind of thinks you're uncool and he's w trying to walk ahead of you as fast as he can and you have to like <laughs> power walk to keep up. Is it like that? It's. it's well, I. They actually don't spend much, if any, of the game doing what birds do, which is flying and shitting. They spend <laughs> <laughs> they spend most of it really looking for love and running in track. all the wrong places. Oh in yeah, places. I think it'd make a great anime or something like that. But it's just it might. I hope it happens. So, so having played this, Zach, yeah. uh, do you feel like as a man? Now, you can date birds confidently. I feel like I could go to the local park and get any bird I want. Oh, that's, dude. dude. That's kind of like Mysteries, hey. like the secret kind of deal. Yeah. You're going to be plucking them feathers all night long, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how else do you get a bird naked? <laughs> exactly. you got to pull all the feathers out. Oh. Get to yeah. work. You're, you're, you ain't dealing with no 70s birds. We, we're going uh -huh. retro. No retro birds here. No. Yep. Pluck that Trim. shit. Clean. Pearl just bird. A... Oh no, I like I like a little just, bit of feather. Just a <laughs> just a <laughs> slither of feather. Just a just a hey. slim little just just a slim little airstrip. That's all you need. Hey, hey Zach. Yeah. Yes. Hey, when you get back from the park, let me know if it was foul or not. <laughs> oh. Bravo. Kudos to you. Kudos to you and your bird jokes. Run run a foul of that beast. <laughs> Man, fucking hell. I don't think anyone was prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for that. I, <laughs> Zach came on, I didn't know what he was going to talk about. I thought he was, you know, you know, he was going to just sort of sit in and talk about the games he liked for a bit. And uh, Zach always surprises me. And here's my brother, and I love him so much. I mean, I just, I had no idea what he was going to be like. And then that is the way he is. And then I saw a picture of him after that, and I was not <laughs> expecting him to look the way that he looked. He's he's a, he's a he is a dapper gentleman, and uh, I was not expecting him to be as well put together as he is. That's right, that's right. Zach, what's the best way to describe it? Uh, Zach writes fan fiction because he can, <laughs> and because he knows, and because he knows that he can. He has a gift for writing, and he squanders it upon <laughs> the perverse. <laughs> and the demented and we love him for it don't we guys oh yeah. i love it i love it so much you but when you describe him as some someone who writes fan fiction like that's not what you expect a guy who writes fan fiction to look like <laughs> and the way he plays video games is like i i it's could never even begin to imagine it it's it's kind of disturbing in a way the way he plays video games i absolutely agree well the uh, next clip is Zach presenting how he plays Toontown. And like Eric said, I don't think any one of us was expecting it to be this hilarious and disturbing at the same time. I don't think anyone was expecting him to play Toontown, period. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. Um, Zach, what have you been playing, dude? Uh, besides Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, I've been playing uh, Toontown Online. Dude, how many jelly beans do you have? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Not, my, not many at all. I, I got on there and I realized that it was full of children, and so I spent my time annoying children that are probably the age of five upward. Oh, so 
Uh, so you do have some jelly beans, Only like, but you haven't spent them all. Yeah. Do, would you qualify yourself as a Toontown hero or a goddamn Toontown joke? <laughs> I'm a Toontown <laughs> joke. I'm shit at this game. <laughs> it involves so much fucking grinding. It's oh, that's it, sad. like this game has more RPG elements than any other game released <laughs> after 2011. No joke. But what is sorry? What is this game? It proves that Disney, that Walt Disney, National Socialism never died. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, do you, the bad guy, or the kind of bad guys in this, are called the Cogs, right? And they're these robots who they only think of business, right? And they're like, oh, business, profits, blah, and they know, and like they don't like jokes, and they want to change Toontown into like just just this wasteland, and there's like. Boss bots, law bots, and like, just basically every position in society that capitalism fills for you, there's that, and you have to defeat them. And that's why I think it's a fucking game for communists, and I had to insult the children on that. Goddamn two town joke. Yep. yep. But I gotta go around, and I gotta tell those kids that communism isn't cool, and that I'm really annoyed. Them. My favorite way to do it is since there's a word filter, so you can't just straight up tell a kid to go fuck themselves. It's um, <laughs> you gotta like the best way to do it is to follow them around for a while, and they'll be like, "Stop following me, stop following me." But the best one I got was, "Please don't be mean to me. I'm sick, sad face." <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> I followed that kid around. Follow that kid around. God. <laughs> Still so that that like fucking. breaks my fucking heart. <laughs> I took a screen cap if you guys wanted. <laughs> post it on the pod. Yeah, you post it on the Facebook wall. <laughs> okay, I'll post it on the Facebook wall right now. No. Oh god, this reminds me of Habbo Hell's hotel raids that you used to do when you were actually a kid. <laughs> oh, okay, let me get the photos. You're a little shit then as well. <laughs> I've always been a little shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't be mean to me. I'm sick. Oh, oh, Jesus man. Christ, what a fucking heartbreaker. <laughs> oh. Okay, it's on the wall. Okay. That was for episode 15. And uh, that was a happy little accident from one of my favorite uh, moments from our dear co-host and friend Brian Abishakra. What could about what could I what could I be alluding to? Well, we were talking about the PS Vita and and here's this clip. Can you can you count down this clip from 7 please, Eric? 7 6 5 Wait, did you count it down from 7? I started at 7. Do you want me to start from 8, eight 7 6 5 4 3 Two, well, hang on. I started at eight that time. Hang on. Okay, Seven. Okay. Six. Okay. Shut up. Shut up. Shut Martin, up. are you ready for the countdown? No. Okay, go on. Pre okay, prepare. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Uh, Austin also asks very briefly, he's never owned a PlayStation. Should he jump in with the PS3, the Vita, or should he just wait for the PS4? <laughs> Get a Vita. Get a Vita. There you go. <laughs> you I'm PlayStation. What should I get? Vita. Vita. Yep. Start small. Start small. Yeah. Get the one with the best library. Yeah. <laughs> get your feet wet. Yeah, exactly. Austin, there's heaps of good games on the PS3. Get a PS3. Uh, get a PS3. Yeah, get a PS3. Uh, he also says, keep doing the show. It's PG game. Thank you very much, Austin. Yes. No, we were gonna we were gonna stop, but I guess we'll go on. Yeah. Austin just, should get a PS Vita. And then write back to us and tell us what he thinks about it, and then we can all laugh at him. Communion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, yeah. it's fucking this Metal Gear Solid collection and fucking Gravity Rush. There's nothing else on this goddamn system. <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a good Katamari game, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's got Rayman oranges. Or oranges? Rayman oranges. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll tell you what, boy. One of my 
<laughs> one of my goddamn favorite games is that Raymond Oranges. And hey, when I like to get to that anime, I like to watch that goddamn Evergalion. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, hey, guys. I heard that yeah. uh, Raymond Bananas is coming out next year. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and since that day myself any of our listeners and all all of us all together none of us have been able to pronounce raymond origins the correct way ever again i can't do it 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 is called rayman rayman oranges period and yeah and i mean i'm still waiting for rayman bananas and rayman fruit basket i mean i'm still expecting Expecting those games to come out whenever I talk about Raymond Oranges. Well, no, Raymond Legumes is coming out. So, yeah, we've, we've done these jokes. These jokes are done. Yeah. yeah. We know you these love them, good though. Jokes. Good jokes, guys. Good jokes. 2012 Revisited. Clip show! Clip show! Clip show! Whoa! Uh, awards and excellence to all involved. Well, we, we've, had a, we've had a few uh, guests on our podcast throughout the year. Uh, we, had, we had Matt from the 10-Minute Turbo Show on episode 4. He gave us some really good insight into a lot of obscure uh, UK consoles and some really cool background on some games that we didn't know about before. Go check that episode out, uh, episode four. Uh, we also had uh, a young boy called Cody Brown on uh, Deep Into the Tiber- Tiger Hole, episode 17. Uh, but we also had, on episode nine, Derek Acosta from Mega64, uh, Super Dracula World. And uh, he told us about many things including the life of a Disneyland pimp, and also a game that he's been working on for quite some time. Why isn't coding as easy as just coming up with ideas? Yeah, just and, talking them into <laughs> the Talking them into a microphone? Because we would make the most amazing say. games of all time. Dude, your, your Super Dracula Wars would be done. Yeah, Super Dracula World. Another idea. Or world, that's right. Imagine a sandbox game where you're Dracula. Like, just biting people. That's all. Well, the, Derek has that, this, like, million dollar idea for a game that you someday, I think, will get this game made. I think it'd be so cool, like, a Grand Theft Auto sandbox world where you're a vampire, you can turn into a bat, you fly around, you have to bite hot chicks, make them fall <laughs> in love with you, you can make vampires part of your, like, army, like, in and Saints Row, you build a gang, it's and set if in, you like, get Romania. too much notoriety, yeah, it's set in Romania in, like, the 17, 1800s, if you get too much notoriety, fucking Van Helsing starts tracking you down. <laughs> it's a great game. You have to over you have to overthrow Vlad, uh, Vlad the Impaler. It's true. It's, you have to get back home before the sun rises every day. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, can you. Watch, then you can yeah. watch Dracula TV channels. Yeah, and and you have to save your game while sitting on the toilet. That's the only place you can do it. Because <laughs> the crypt doesn't make sense. It has, it has to be a yeah. Dracula toilet. Yeah. No. See, nobody ever. I've never seen a vampire movie where a vampire takes a shit. <laughs> some writers out there need to do some serious thinking. Exactly. I mean, that, that's that's something that's not really been uh, explored in the zombie canon either. I mean, yeah, we zombies all, we all... do nothing but eat, but yet they never poo. How is this possible? It just hasn't been explored. Romero didn't explore it, therefore nobody else is allowed to explore it because you're disrupting the canon, apparently. I guess so. See, I want to see zombie shits. It doesn't look like a regular living poop. It's like all dried out already. It comes out dry. <laughs> and it, it has limbs. And it has limbs, yes. It, it, it walks, too wants brains. It walks out of their pants. <laughs> down their leg. That was a, that was a really good episode. I, I know. I, uh, I heard it. And I have been around Derek a lot. So I've heard it all before. <laughs> Super Dracula World is not a stranger to me. I am extremely familiar with the life of a Disneyland pimp and Super Dracula World and all the things that it entails. Um, oh God, you know, guys, it's what? Are, what are we like? Maybe halfway through this? Maybe? Maybe a third? I don't know. I I don't know where to go from here, guys. Too much good stuff. You know what? Fuck it. Here's a clip of a dog fucking a cat. Do you, hey, do you remember when we had to, like, fight giant snakes and tigers and stuff just for, like, survival? And now a guy is doing so much drugs that his arms are exploding? <laughs> <laughs> Good Evolution! Job. Good job, humans. <laughs> uh, so, uh, somehow from then, I ended up on a very touching and moving video of um, a dog saving a cat's life. 
Oh. Yeah. And it, only it a, only to kill it later. It was all a race. <laughs> no, 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 it was a very heroic and courageous dog that was giving the Heimlich maneuver to a cat. Oh, was, whoa. Was the was, cat thankful? Well, the, the cat the cat survived, so he oh. said, my friend, thank you so much. Are you sure the dog wasn't trying to have sex with the cat? Well, I, I don't know, man. Here, let me, li live on Game Call Podcast episode okay. 14, let me just send you this link. Let's do it. I'm gonna watch this. I'm gonna watch this dog have sex with this cat. It's gonna well, be fun. I don't. I don't think that's what's going on at all. Okay, just this. This is a very brave young pup. Uh huh. He's, he's doing what he can to help out his his best friend. Like a real horny dog. Uh huh. No, no, just a, just a courageous young pup. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, that, no. And, uh, no, that's that's not what he's. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> let's see what we got here. That's not saving. That's not saving the cat. Dog tries to save cat friend. Oh no! He's Heroic very, canine. He's just a very brave young. <laughs> <pup -pup>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, it's it has a very moving soundtrack as well. Can you kind of describe what you're hearing? Guys? Uh, it's it's a beautiful piano sonata. Like I feel like I hear it. I mean. <laughs> I oh. feel like I would hear it in uh, like a Final cat. Fantasy game. I like when the cat's what trying you, to kick the dog. What do you mean, the poor cat? It's it, it's like it spit up it spit up a kitty biscuit just now that was lodged in its poor little throat, and it's all thanks to that brave pup. There's a who, who got there's it a right, link who got it right round the chest, and you know. There's a link. The, there's a link in the description for ASPCA.org. <laughs> 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 oh my god. That dog, I don't even think the dog was like inside the cat. Like the cat was just like hanging out and kind of giving like the dog like little back kicks. Yeah. But man, that dog had like some style. Like it was, he get, had, it was he had, getting like, some no. it was getting some air. Yeah. It was getting some air. Oh my <laughs> god. Well, you know what? I'm glad he saved I'm glad he saved that cat. Con congratulations dog, you're a hero. <laughs> And if that dog's a hero, I've been a hero so many times. Me too. Yeah, man. I'm a godsend. <laughs> <laughs> Last night a DJ saved my life. <laughs> Anytime that you can just sing a song, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there. <laughs> so there's we that. We're so we're so highbrow here. It's like I wouldn't even consider this to be like a podcast. I just call it art. Is there an iTunes art section that we can just be? put on can we start so. an itunes art section that people we can will. download us at i'm writing in i'm running into steve jobs right now okay. mr. Uh, that's, mm, hey you might want to not write mr in jobs no don't hey, hey please I got, do the I skit i uh, like you very much reached australia he's dead he died what he died he is no longer with us in the land of the living. Yeah. Like, you can Google it, but, like, I don't think he's going to reply to your email. <sighs> Alright. I mean, sorry. I'm hitting, back, I'm hitting backspace, guys. Okay. Uh -huh. Can you just can you just introduce the next clip while I keep hitting backspace? While uh, Jake keeps hitting backspace to erase that email. <sighs> I'm really upset. I, I mean, he's dead, so I'm sorry. In episode 11, uh, some of my favorite moments uh, in the Gaming Cult podcast happened because of Martin. And this is the episode Rise of Louder Laupin, where Martin gives us fun translations of American or English characters into uh, Svenska. Now, I was talking with uh, Martin earlier about all the things we were talking about in episode 10. And Mario, uh, sorry, Martin brought up <laughs> <laughs> my, my my friend um, Super Martin Brothers brought up um, Rescuers Down Under, but like many things in the land of Sverdiga, that is not what it was called. Martin, what was the, what was it called in in Sweden? Uh, the Swedish title translated to English was uh, Bernard and Bianca in Australia. <laughs> Yeah, and wow. uh, <clears throat> the, 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 <laughs> this kind of trend of renaming things to 
something completely different, um, whether it be like comic book characters, uh, yeah. even video games and movies was something that was like very frequent from the 70s to the late 90s, I believe. Right. Because we all we all like Batman, don't we? And well, in 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 America we have in America we have Batman, right? And uh, in Japan we have Batman, right? Uh, in most uh, European countries we had Batman. Uh-huh. Uh, in Africa we had Batman, right? In South America we had Batman. Mm-hmm. In Central America we had Batman, and in Russia and mainland Asia and the Middle East we had Batman. Uh huh. Was it called? What did what 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 did we have in Sweden, Martin? Läderlappen. Gross. <laughs> what? You never heard of this? No. <laughs> they decided yeah. to call it something else. What does that translate to, <laughs> Batman? Uh, no, it doesn't actually. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. oh, of course. So why would it translate to Batman? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, well, uh, läder uh, is probably something you can just like understand on your own what it means. Right? Lather? They're gonna, th- they're gonna think ladder. It's leather. Yeah, it's leather. Um, okay. And lappen is, well, was actually a slang for bats uh, back in the day. Um, so basically, his name was the leather bat. What? That sounds. What? Yeah. Why would you. No! Why would you name him that? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> I, I have no idea. And. Uh, just to give you another example, let's yeah, let's move along in the DC roster here, because uh, because uh, I know uh, they're all of us pretty much are all, they're all DC nuts. Uh, I'm not sure, Brian, you, you're into your DC, right? Oh yeah, Batman's my favorite superhero. Leather Bat, sorry, yeah. Leather Bat. Uh huh. Leather Bat guy. <laughs> and Zach, yeah. Zach's a, such a big enough DC nut that he got me back into it about a year or so ago. But yeah, let's let's keep moving along that roster and give us some more examples, please. Mark. Yeah. Right. Um. <clears throat> Superman is uh-huh. Stålmannen in Swedish. What uh, does that translate to? The Iron Man. Oh, what, of course. Yeah, why? Yeah, of Wait. course. <laughs> what, which what? is good because it, there's not another character named that, so I totally exactly. agree with the call. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Good job, guys. What's, Wait, what's Iron Man? <laughs> he's, he's yeah, what's called Iron Man Iron. called? He's Superman, called you fucking idiot. <laughs> 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 he's called Clark <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or, in, or in Sweden, uh, Clark Kunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clark Kunt. Perfect. No, no, no. More like uh, Clark uh, Kent. That would probably be more. Yeah, yeah Kent. Wow. So what? So what other characters are there with cool names? Yeah, let me try and think. Um, but ha- what, what happened when Iron Man came along? Exactly. Did, did uh, the Swedish fucking lose their minds? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, probably. <laughs> yeah, it probably went along those lines. Uh, but no, I think Iron Man was called Iron Man, and that's it. I mean, well, that's not confusing. Perfect. No, not not at all. Um, I'm trying to like think of some more. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try and think of some more characters that had a different name in Swedish. Um, I just, I just imagine the people who j- are just give me things being in a meeting, going like, <laughs> "All right, guys, new Iron Man comic coming out this week." Hey guys, have you heard about this new character? Who is it? Iron Man? Oh, 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 oh fuck. Oh, we did real bad, you guys. We did, we messed up real bad. Did I do bad, boss? <laughs> wow. uh, could, could you guys, like, give me examples of uh, comic book characters? And I'll Green Lantern. Yeah, Green Lantern Green would Lantern, have been my next uh, one. I want to know what he's all about. Um. Let me just try and find that real quick. Green- um, what what would you change him to? Why even change no, any of them? No, no his, his name <laughs> is uh, Green Latin, but in Swedish. Uh, so there's no change in that what, what, uh, what? How do you say it in Swedish? Gröna lyktan. Jesus Christ, <laughs> right off how horrifying. Of Sick. <laughs> <laughs> there, was a, there was a Spindelmannen. Yeah, that's Spider-Man. Yep. Which, which that, that works out. Yeah, that translates Pretty much into one for one, doesn't it? So. Yeah. Uh, give me some more examples. Uh, oh, uh, let's let's go for a movie title. All right. Uh, I remember Transporter. we we. <laughs> no, no, we talked about one in particular, Martin, before. Yeah. Yes, we did. Um, 
I'm sure you guys are familiar with the uh, movie from, what is it, like 1990, uh, called Groundhog Day. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. And as you can imagine, uh, it has a completely different title in Swedish. Um, I'm going to say the Swedish title first. And Please. it was called Mondag Hela Veckan. And uh -huh. that, tra that translates into Monday the entire week. <laughs> <laughs> that That's is like... fantastic. The thinking, Sweden's thinking, how can we make this title more accessible so people can understand it? Yeah. Oh, so it, uh, the, the day comes again and again, so it is Monday all of the week, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Does the movie take place on Monday? I'm pretty sure Groundhog's Day is on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, oh man. I'm real confused by your country. Yeah, believe me, I am as well. <laughs> this is fantastic. You guys are weird. Oh yeah. Man. I think we get that a lot, actually. Oh man, and that that really set a catalyst, didn't it? I mean. We uh we get a lot of emails in from our viewer listeners. Mail. It's no viewer mail. Oh, what do you mean? It's viewer mail. We get a lot of viewer mail. That doesn't make any sense. It's viewer mail. Okay, it's viewer mail. From our viewers. We get a lot of viewer mail uh from uh viewers and listeners. And um well just our listeners really. But No, just our viewers. Okay. Uh well we get it. We get that a lot and we really thank you a lot for it. We do love when you write into us Gaming Cult Podcast at gmail.com or facebook.com slash podcast. After that episode, we had a uh, fan write into us from South Korea, and he has now infamy within the Gaming Cult podcast. His name is Kay, and he sent us so many interesting tidbits on Asian and Japanese culture and uh, names for things in uh, Chinese Mandarin that we gave him his own segment, and that is Cajun Corner. And here is our favorite bits of Cajun Corner. We have another letter from our good friend Kay in South Korea. And you might remember from last episode, episode 12, he uh, was telling us about some of the Chi uh, Mandarin Chinese translations for some of our favorite heroes. Uh, focusing mainly, mostly on DC heroes, but he's uh, he's gone ahead and he's given us some Marvel stuff. And this oh, is where I cannot wait. So this, is, this is where it gets really interesting here, guys. I cannot wait. Uh, so Kay writes, Hey guys, how's it going? Great job on another amazing podcast. Thank you very much. I realized when you read out my mail that I only told you a handful of DC examples which admittedly tend to just add hero on the end a lot. However, uh, Mandarin Chinese translations of Marvel properties tend to be a lot more creative. Uh, for example, X-Men, X Zan Jing, which uh, the three which, something, right? Which translates to X War Police. X War <laughs> Police. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, now you have to excuse me. Uh, uh, Mandarin listeners, if I'm getting if I'm getting the pronoun, 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 pronoun no way, you're, you're doing it great. Yeah. Uh, Wolverine, Jin Gang Lang. Oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> Steel Wolf. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, Badass! Oh my yeah, yeah. god! That's better that was than a really Wolverine. good name. Oh. He's been putting these in order of awesomeness, so you guys haven't heard anything yet. Yeah, wow. that, that is pretty fitting because he's got an adamantium skeleton. That's a metal, uh -huh. all right? So and call him steel. Yeah. And he's like a low. And he's like a yeah. He was raised by wolves. You know. Yes. Yeah. He could have been. Uh, Gambit is Pai Hong, uh, <laughs> which means card emperor. <laughs> <laughs> card emperor. <laughs> yep. Uh, Spider Woman, which is uh, Zizu Nu Sha, which is Spider Woman hero. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jubilee. We all know Jubilee, right? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. oh, yes. Jubilee translates to Juan Juan, which translates to Happy Happy. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Jubilee. I, 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 guess, I guess they took Jubilee to be quite literal. Happy Happy. 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 Yeah. Enjoy. Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee was a half. I don't Asian think you're happy enough. Yes, yeah. yeah, she was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach you to be happy. I'll teach your grandmother to suck eggs. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you ain't, if you ain't the granddaddy of all liars. Uh, Cyclops, Du Yanglong, also known as Lei She Yun, uh, which translates to One-Eyed Dragon. Whoa. That is awesome. Or, uh, or Laser Eye. <laughs> laser Eye, I like One-Eyed Dragon. <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> less awesome. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here's where it gets good. Magneto, uh, one key one. One, no, one, one C, I'm not sure if the C is soft or not. One, one C, one. Which translates to... I think it's to, Chi, but yeah, chi, go on. Yeah, one Chi, one. Okay. Which uh, translates to 10,000 Magnet King. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000 Magnet King. Well, if the X-Men just fight 10,001 Magnets, they can overpower it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, thousand Magnet King. You mean the X War Police? <laughs> yeah, the yeah the, the X War Police. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Hulk is Lu Ju Ren, which uh, translates to Green Giant. Okay. Uh, so I guess they didn't have the Jolly Green Giant over there selling that can of corn. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, Deadpool is Sishi, which is Dead Samurai. <laughs> all right. Which is interesting. Uh, yes. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Daredevil, Chao Dan Chao. Uh, which translates to Super Ballsy Hero. Wait, Super Ballsy? Yep, that's, yep. Da that's Daredevil, so there you go. Super Ballsy, <laughs> like he takes risks? Yeah, he's a Daredevil. He's With Super Ballsy. Super Ballsy. He's Super Ballsy. He's got a giant pair of swings. Hey, to be fair, if they had named that Daredevil movie Super Ballsy Hero, I would have watched it. Super Ballsy Hero. <laughs> ben Affleck right. is Super Ballsy Hero. A <laughs> uh, uh, little, little bit of a Mandarin bonus round. He's included some game titles as well, relevant awesome. to the Gaming Cult podcast. Oh, nice. Uh, so here's some titles that we might find amusing. Uh, Buster Move, a.k.a. Puzzle Bubble, uh, one of our favorites, of course, is huh? Pao Pao Lang, which translates to Bubble Bubble Dragon. Which is, I like that, that's cool. Yep, that's all right. Very little. Very little. Better, very little. Uh, Pac-Man is Chi Do, uh, Chi Do Ren. Which is be bean eating man. Bean eating man. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. Again, very little, very little literal description description there. I would uh, I would make fun of that, but our character's name is Pac Man, so yeah. Bean eating man makes sense. It used to be called Puck Man. That's right. Yeah. Which which they had to change once it came over to uh, it the was, states. It was people, too easy. Yeah. To just put put that over to someone else. A little yeah. bit of a bad boy term, which. Bad word uh, there. Namco America said no, no. All you had to do was scratch off a little part of the paint on the P, yep. and it said and you're all done. different than Puck Man. You're all done. But <laughs> if you want to know what that might say, it's not going to be us that's going to say it. So, Duck Man. There's that. <laughs> there is Could that. be. Could be. Could be. Uh, Garrett, you're going to like this one. Resident Evil. Oh, oh wow. Sorry. I should say Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, you should say that. You should always say that. I should, and yeah. I just did. So Good. what of it? Uh, Can I say sure, it? Sure, go for it. Okay. Three, three, two, and... Resident Evil. Thank you, Garrett. That's Thank good. you. <laughs> Sheng Hua Wei Ji. <laughs> <laughs> what, does that, what does that translate what does to? What does it mean? Biochemistry crisis. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like I'm in school. <laughs> There's a test! Oh shit, I'm in a biochemistry crisis! <laughs> but Pop then quiz, again, motherfucker. the uh, Japanese title, I mean, it's not that far off, is it? It's bio... It's biohazard. Biohazard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Biohazard. Biohazard. Yeah. Can, can I just say that I love that name? I love the name Cajun <laughs> Corner. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying Cajun Corner, but you have a cold. And so, like, you're fucking up, but that's not what it is. It's Cajun Corner, because it's Kay's Asian Corner. Yep. And we, we really have to thank Kay as well for all everything that he contributes to the Game Called Podcast. Uh, he's got some stuff in reserve as well, like some whole things that will be coming next year. Well, 2013. They'll be coming 2013 that you guys aren't ready for. I'll tell you that much. Whoa. Wow. That's like a threat. That, you, like, just yeah. threatened me. Yeah. Well, you know, you'll just have to deal with that. Take it day by day. Have you heard of the phrase getting joked? Well, neither did we before this. Yeah. Um, from episode 13, Coffee Time for In Talk podcast, Eric and Garrett explains to us what joke means, but we still don't get it. 
You gotta you gotta weigh up the positives and negatives, you know. Yeah, exactly. If I can't be a handsome man, I might as well be a pretty girl. Mm. Swings and roundabouts, isn't it? Yeah. Did you get yoked before the paddle? Yeah, goddamn right I did. I did too, man. Yeah, it was pretty awesome it, when you're wearing that gi and mm -hmm. you're like training and stuff behind yeah. the panel. Mostly, right. mostly I wore a t-shirt that I cut the sleeves off of and billowy pants that no I bought way, at the dude. dollar store. But now this, yeah. uh, I have to inter gi. I have to interject here. Um, uh -huh. Some uh, term that our international audience may not be aware of, um, and perhaps we can enlighten Martin and Zach to what exactly does getting yoked entail. Uh, Garrett, do you want to explain what getting yoked oh, is? Oh, yeah. Can we getting guess what yoked? it means? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Me and Eric always get yoked before panels, yep. so take a shot at it. <laughs> um, Martin, would you like to guess first? Uh, no, you go ahead. Uh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I have really um, good dynamic right now. Uh, <laughs> damn. Well, I don't want to say... Just but... say it, brother. Yeah. Is, that... is it, like, a communal... Circle of <laughs> soggy biscuit or something? I don't know. Yeah. Where would we? How would you? What do you mean a soggy biscuit? You've never yeah. heard of? How, well, I've how heard of a we, soggy biscuit, but yeah, I mean, how, mean, like, how is the convention what do you mean, staff like, like, gonna let this go like, on? Like we dip it, in, <laughs> like we dip it in water. How would we make the biscuit soggy, Zach? I don't um, understand. <laughs> I believe it's it occurs when a man loves himself very much, uh -huh. and he, so, so um, yes, yeah, so so much, and. He um, he puts his poinus um, in his hand, uh -huh. <laughs> and if he touches it and if he plays it enough, um, he shoots things like, like a gun, like ropes. Well, no, but kind of like ropes, but they're <laughs> sticky. They're sticky ropes. Sticky like, ropes. Like, 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 like a nerd's rope. He drops loads, bro. Kind of like being, a, it's, it's like being Spider-Man. Zach, like, I I can just imagine that. That mom and dad are standing behind you, looking at me, uh, saying this right now. Zach was right next to me. Oh, cool! Very cool. No, hey, Zach, that's not what getting yoked is. Uh, yeah. getting, getting. Wait, wait, I want Martin to guess what getting yeah, yoked yeah, yeah. is. All right, um, I'm gonna go back a bit and do you, uh, re do something referred to Jack as. Do you know what antiquing is? Yo, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, joke to me sounds like being antiqued but instead of having what is it like flour something uh -huh. like that uh, you have exactly what Zach described as in when a man loves himself <laughs> very much. so, so uh, we would get it in our hands and throw it at each other and, well yeah uh, and, like spider say, each other you say me myself and I I love you so much uh-huh man you guys are perverted over there yeah you guys are weird we're just ten, we're talking ten, we're, we're talking ten, about listen ten, brother I'll break it down for you right now, brother, and I'll tell you what getting yoked before a panel means. Ooh. It's, it's when you get the pump and you feel your muscles with the... You feel your muscles and they, you, they get big and they bulge and you get the pump behind stage from doing too many push-ups. It still sounds kind of like you're jerking off. <laughs> I I'll, 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 no, we just do... You do so many push-ups that your veins pop and yeah. your arms get... Super Big? buff, yeah. so that all the chicks in the front row go, "Ooh, look Whoa. at that guy's look at that guy's that veins guy's, and that guy's biceps muscles. and his triceps are yep. bulging, yep. and the veins are quickening with each pulse of his beating heart, mm -hmm. and they they get excited mm -hmm. in the front row." You see. But is there but, is there like, is there like a sonic utterance that goes along with this act? Um, yeah, man. Do you ever rip thirty push-ups with claps in between, man? Yeah, do you just you go so and you like, just keep going? <laughs> yeah. And you just keep going, and then you get towards the end, and you're just like, two more! Fucking two more! Yeah, let's two get more. fucking yoked, One more, bro! One more, bro! One more! And you then say, you do it, yeah, and you then you stand up, and you go, woo! You gotta say bro a lot. Yeah, you a gotta lot. Call, you gotta call people bro. You gotta call yourself bro, and other people you gotta, bro. You definitely have to do that little scream thing at the end yep. in celebration for your accomplishment. Because you're yoked, because now you're yoked. And then, and then I love you, bro! <laughs> we hold, and then we hold that 5D, that heavy camera out, yep. you know, with arms, you know, properly portrayed yep. and everyone's just staring at your bicep going look at how buff that guy is mm -hmm. well, and all the girls say i want to i want to do i want to do uh, i want to do sex on that guy yeah so Show they want to do I the girls see on his it mouth. they want to do lines off of the yeah that heavy vein on yep. the top of your forearm they, the girls oh, say shit. i, I want to kiss him on his head and then i want to kiss him on his other head wow that's an oh. advanced yeah. that's what they uh, and then and then mwah, that's smaller. an advanced technique I, so I, I, I still think that masturbation is a really relevant <laughs> part of this act. 
second kind of is, oh, it's total mental masturbation. I mean, <laughs> ten okay. things I love about me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, episode 16, we had a music special, and as you know, on the Game Call Podcast, we do talk about music every episode. We give our album recommendations, and uh, we'll be giving our favorite albums of uh, 2012, or favorite discoveries during 2012, uh, in the next episode. But uh, on episode 16, uh, Devil on the Dance Floor, we had our music special 666.1, and we had our, uh, we had our good friend um, Mauricio Alvarado. And uh, he gave us a little story about a record that he picked up once and how he achieved the picking up of that record. Venom, man, Venom. Yeah, like Venom. Venom. The, first ven- Venom. the first Venom album, Welcome yes. to Hell. I mean, people always say black metal because they're like, oh man, it gave black metal its namesake. And, but uh, to me, it had too many uh, cheesy tracks like Teacher's Pet and stuff like that, but the first Venom album, Welcome to Hell, is just yeah. so dirty and so... Just a giant Baphomet pentagram on the front. It's fucking rock and roll, it's man. It's evil nothing else. as fuck, man. It's yeah. good. It's so good. I have, a, I have a quick, funny Venom story, I think. I, I go to this record show um, that it's like basically like Comic-Con for records, and I went there. I took some of my records so I could trade or sell That's it or whatever. Right. Tell me about this place. Uh, it's in the OC. It's like uh, near uh, Knotts and uh, Orange it's... County. Just so you know. Oh yeah, not the TV show. The and uh, so I went there. Like it's this thing, kind of like Comic Con, except records, bunch of record collectors, whatever. So I take my records and I see a Venom record. I'm like, holy shit! I fucking want this record, and I don't have enough money. I'm like, hey, uh, would you trade anything? It's like, uh, sure. What you got? I have this Striper record. I was like, okay, <laughs> so I essentially traded a Striper record Fuck Striper. Oh for fucking Venom. Traded God is, for fucking Satan. That's the, that is the epitome of a good trade. Wow, like, dude. That's just, awesome. Just for the can story, we, can we man. Give, right, can we just give Mauricio a round of applause for that? Yeah. I still have it. It's fucking... Uh, that dude, is funny fuck, as fuck. Fuck Striper. Oh, fucking. that... That brings me to a good question. What Stri- is... Just for reference, Striper is a uh, Christian heavy metal band from the 80s that still tour today. Yeah, they like yellow and black. They really do. And they just like those a... two colors. They look like a bunch of tools. They look like a bunch of fucking yellow jackets. Yep. A bunch of bees <laughs> buzzing around. <laughs> they Venom's opened better. up for Metallica, actually. Back in the oh, day. did they? I'm wow. Not, that yeah. doesn't surprise me one bit. What is, uh... What is, a uh... In in all of your music collection, um, what is your quirkiest or weirdest or most interesting, for whatever reason, thing that you have in your collection? Like, for me, I have a record, and I'll, and I'll get to that at the end. But for you guys, like, I want to go around, I want to see, like, what's that has an interesting story, or there's something, like, cool about it. What's your one? Somebody start. All right, well, I'm, I'll go last because I'm just going. I'm going to head go ahead and boast and say that none of you can top this. So just go <laughs> ahead, Mauricio, go for it. I'm like staring at all my records real quick, see which one like stands out. But honestly, I think maybe it's just that Venom record. Cause I, yeah, I think it well, might be that no. Venom record. I mean, I just can't believe that you would trade a Striper record away for anything. I mean, Venom. <laughs> who cares? It's stupid. Striper with a Y, <laughs> Striper with a Y, and you're getting rid of that? Wow, Mauricio. Classless. That's all yeah. I have to say. I mean, yeah. stupid. Well, you didn't even go see him live. I know, right? What the fuck? So, I know that we already played a clip of a cat fucking a dog, or vice versa. Uh, there was just interspecies sex. We but did. also, also from that episode, uh, Street Intersection Overlord, is our friend and Jake's brother, Zach Innes, Telling a fun story about uh, too much hot sauce on a taco, which, me being in Southern California, I find strange that you guys would have tacos in Sydney, Australia. But, Zach likes his tacos a little on the spicy side. What? Clip show. Clip show. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys make it to San Diego, we'll show you... Uh... We'll show you good San Diego food, too. I just went to a place called Extraordinary Desserts last night. 
That Ooh. was ex- those were extraordinary desserts. What'd you for get? Sure, I got the cream cheese brownie. Ooh, uh, and my friend got the coconut coconut cream pie thing, and uh, I got a nice cup of coffee, and she got a nice cup of tea, and we had a really good time. And then I saw Moonrise Kingdom. Sick. Oh man. Sick. Speaking Before- of food. <laughs> yeah. Um. I went to a Mexican restaurant er, in around Jake's area the other night. Uh-huh. N- now, um, they oh, offer the, they offer fly, the yeah, flying, flying fajita sisters, <laughs> oh, and they uh, and they offer something called the Wall of Pain. And I thought, oh. and I, I thought, you know what? It's not going to be that painful. And I remembered this one chili sauce that Jake got once called Dave's Ultimate Insanity Sauce. And I was like, fuck, that shit's hot. Because it was still in my fridge. Yeah, exactly. You have to you have to add a drop of it diluted in oil. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Five hundred thousand scovel. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Give me some. And and so I was like, I found this one on the shelf called Mad Dog Three Five Seven Special Edition, and yeah. I was having tacos, and it, it's the thing is like over like six hundred thousand scovel heat units. Did you just add that to a taco straight up? Yeah, and I just went. I added to multiple tacos straight out, like two or three. I, just, I, I got, I got, a, hey, I, dude, I got what a, are you doing? A that's tape. like fucking. It's like, oh, edge. I want to see what hard drugs are like. I'm gonna take a lot of hard drugs at once. Yeah, I got, I got a, a tablespoonful of chili, like on each taco, and put it on. Oh my god! And I was like, all right, let's go for it. And I finished the first taco, and it didn't feel too hot. It just felt a little bit spicy. I'm like, all right, time to start the second one. And so I finished the second one. Well, I'm about to finish the second one, and then I just feel this pain. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh no, oh no, and then baby made a boom boom, <laughs> and tears start streaming from my eyes. And the thing is, I'm at this restaurant with my girlfriend and her friends. I know no one there, and so, and so I'm sh- like, and there's one other guy who's done it as well, but he's had like just a few drops, and he's flipping out. And so I'm trying to like keep my cool. I'm like shaking at the table and like the table's rumbling and the glasses are like, you know, just kind of rattling and I'm like, fuck. And then it gets to the point where I can't speak because the air I'm exhaling is so hot that it just burns my mouth. And then I start, and then I start just like violently shaking and like tears streaming down my face. And my girlfriend's like, are you okay, Zach? And I'm like, I'm absolutely fine. In fact, that's really good. It's really tasty. You should try some. And she was like, <laughs> and she was like, no, I'm good, thanks. And then I convinced some other guy at the table to try as much as me, and he ran to the bathroom, and he was very sick. Awesome. And- so the rumors of Super Saiyan Eight were true. It was. They yeah. were. Could, they were. Could be true. And then I'm, I'm but, still not sure if they're true. But then, after the pain in the mouth subsided. I started getting this pain in my heart, like this burning, searing pain in my chest. Oh, no way. And then, it's, and then it moved down to my stomach. And oh. so my, like I was struggling to walk, like I had to hold my stomach as I walked. And then I got to bed and I fell asleep and I was like, okay, well, after taking a dump, I fell asleep and I was like, you okay. Must have been, you must have been tripping balls because I used, oh, I used yeah. to ha- be addicted to chili sauce and it's basically, it's like an opiate pretty much. <laughs> that was good. Really yeah, sense. I just felt that sense of whoa, and then I managed to get to, and then I got home, and then I woke up in the morning, and like my lips still sting a little bit, and like, whoa, and then my stomach just goes, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh god, oh god, and I charged to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the shit I took was more painful than the experience of the night. Wow. <laughs> I was struggling, I was like screaming, and my mum's like, are you okay, Zach? I'm like, oh, I'm fine, mum. Oh. Get out of the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. And then I was like, I just, and then I tried to have, and then I tried to stand up, and I got this burning sensation like around my groinal region, and it felt like I needed to piss, but I had no piss left. And it was just so bizarre. And then I had to go to the toilet like three, four times, because I'd stand up, and then I'd shit and sit back down again. And then I finally got to the shower, and I tried to, you know, wash myself off and be like, fuck, and I was sweating. I was sweating from taking a shit. Oh and my god. Then awesome. suddenly, like, the hot water touches my butt, and oh no. I just flip out again, and I just start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Throw the toaster in the tub when the right rabbit peeks! <laughs> <laughs> 
That was my chilly experience. You wow. stupid bastard. <laughs> oh my god. You look that's on the bad. edge, man. That's Bad Dog 357 Special Edition. Put as much of it as you can on your meals. Jesus. Pro promised good time. <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> So fucking dumb. It's so uh, my poor brother. I hope your asshole is okay. <laughs> Just kiss, k kiss the bed of yourself. Everything's gonna be all right. Well, where do we go from there? People are going. Jake, Eric, Martin. Where the fuck's the fanfic? We want the fanfic. Is that what every, they're going like? Is every that what episode, there's a fanfic. We want the fanfic. Is that how our fans sound? Oh man. Yeah. Mm. These well, guys. they they do, but they they say yolo a lot more. That's. I mean, I understand that though. Because yeah. you only live once. You only live once, and you can only... Um, what else starts with L? I don't know, but here's some fanfic. Clip show! <laughs> Clip show! <laughs> to use um, chewing tobacco, you got to buy one of them cans, don't you? Like, yeah, the ones you, you spit, right? Well, I mean, no, you can just spit on the ground or spit no, on no, no, the that, 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 that doesn't work. you got to use a can. <laughs> I've, I've seen it in movies. I mean, come on. Do they still have spittoons in in uh, in uh, modern day bars in in the United States of America and Mexico? I've never seen a spittoon in a bar. I wish we had that in Australia. And like it has to make that reverberating ting sound when you when yeah you, when, yeah. You, when, you, when you make that dip. <laughs> yeah, you get that dip going. You put that dip in and you go ting. Is it a widely used product though? Did, is there... Uh, not not really. It's it's you know. It's people trying to quit cigarettes, I've heard, uh, and then, like, guys, construction worker guys who maybe can't smoke on the job, but they can dip. Right. Uh, you know, like that. Uh, I, 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 it's actually really common around people I work with, because I work for a construction company, so I'm always around guys that are dipping, and I fucking hate it, because they spit all over the ground, so, you know, <laughs> I... And it's just well, black ritual black vomit as well. Yeah, and if I, I'm work and if I'm working with a guy or, and you know someone drops a fucking tool, you reach down to go pick it up and you know it fell in someone's dip spit. It's makes it's fucked gross. Yeah, makes you feel like you want to get your samurai edge out. But uh, yeah, exactly. There's all, this there's all this black vomit everywhere. What's going yeah. on? What's going on? Is this a biochemistry crisis or not? <laughs> 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 but uh, you, you, you do know, that. You do that dip, and you make that spit, and you look across the other side of the bar, and you see that someone, that that asshole Billy at the other end of the room, he's made a bigger dip and a spit than you. Yeah. So you exchange glances, and you immediately know what's got to go down. Yeah, you know that you're in for a rumble. And Zach's he going to explain it to us in the realm of a fanfic. Zach, go. Billy looked across the bar. It was a quiet night. A night where a man could just sit and watch the game. He looked across the room. And he saw Tony. Tony was a broad man, luscious shoulders, deep blue eyes, sonic shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like he was chewing that dip, thought Billy. And Billy knew what dip means to a man. Dip is not just the concept of ingesting tobacco and spitting it out. It's the essence of man the finest of joys and obviously Tony was enjoying this more than Billy so Billy looked across the room and said hey Tony and Tony looked across lusciously he wet his lips and he spat on the ground Tony rock hard eyes cold as steel nipples <laughs> erect through his sweaty shirt spat back it was it was then known what, what must go down. Grabbing a pool cue, Tony went outside. Billy slowly followed. But it was not what he expected. As Billy approached Tony's pickup truck, he noticed that Tony was shirtless and the pool cue was in between his legs. <laughs> Billy said, what you doing out here, Tony? It's a cold night. Billy spat. Tony looked back. I don't know. Just ride me, cowboy. And he spat back. After this, Tony had run out dipping tobacco. He looked dismayed at his tin. Whatever will I do, Billy? I'm, I'm out of money. I, I've 
drowned my last dollars in the drink. Billy spat in Tony's mouth. <laughs> it, it, was a, it was a warm spit. Luscious <laughs> texture. He did not want to swallow it. He knew that it must be savoured. This was a taste he would not enjoy again. You see, Billy was an out of town who enjoyed going from town to town. Sampling spit of the, of the land. He was a man of the spit. And as the night went on, spit was exchanged. But no words were said. Dismayed at the ending, Billy spat in the face of Tony and bit a Jew. So, Garrett, how's the, uh, how's the AI in Resident Evil 6? <laughs> <laughs> Now I okay I have to I have to put down here on this Game Call podcast clip show of 2012. People always ask, man, Zach writes the best fanfics. Guess what? He doesn't write them, with the exception of one that we're coming up to in a bit. That chewing tobacco thing, w- which started from Martin talking about snus, that came off that came straight off the cuff. No edits, no pauses, no nothing. Giving a little bit of behind the scenes here, but Zach comes up with that shit out of his head. Just from absolute thin air. That has to be a fucking scary place to just like live in that head all day. You have to you have to be like a brave soul to like really be able to understand or begin to understand what that's all about. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I mean, and I don't know if you guys know, but Zach has a girlfriend and he talks about her all the time. And so she is a brave soul for getting in there, figuring it out. Good job. He 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 is quite the bad boy. Speaking of which, Martin, how's your uh, Svenska bad boy training going? Have you been passing that knowledge on to others? I have. I have indeed. It's uh, going better than I expected, actually. Well, this gives us a little bit of a cue to move back here. Way back. Back to episode 5, the first appearance of our dear co-host and friend, Mr. Garrett Hunter. The next up is from episode 5, where Garrett teaches us to be bad boys. We're talking about blood, we're talking about adult things here. Now, Garrett, we know you've received uh, the training, but we would like you to, to uh, bestow knowledge upon us, that's myself, Jake, mm-hmm. Martin, and our listeners out there. Uh, yes. How do we become a bad boy? Oh, um... There's a, it, there's wait, a just very sorry, is this okay? Simple... Is this okay? Yeah, I mean... Oh, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable with dis- discussing the bad boy behavior and okay. uh, the things that it's the things that it's done for me and the things that it's uh, that it you know ways that it's hurt me in life. Okay, I'll be good. I'll be quite frank here. All right, just wait. Um, and and okay, bad boy, go. Okay, well the first thing you got to do to be a bad boy is you got to get a jean jacket. It can right. have sleeves. It cannot have sleeves. Your preference. How bad are you? You know, uh, I you gotta know. wear you gotta wear a hat. But here's <laughs> here's the trick: you wear the hat backwards. What? And hang, you can hang, just you, hang hang on. All right. I know it's crazy. This, I know. I, I know nuts. this. Just shut up for a minute. This podcast. I know we, we've rated it explicit, but Garrett, uh, no, you know what? I'm okay. I'm okay with this. I'm gonna I'm gonna let it slide. But yeah, let's okay. okay. Hat back backwards. Yeah, hat backwards. It, I mean, there, there's a there's a whole bevy of things to to make yourself a bad boy, and you can you can never go back. You know, once you commit to the lifestyle, it's that's just there. And and there's a whole series of instructional videos on YouTube. So if anyone out there wants to find out how to be a bad boy, there's a training school. You got to go to the Gleason Bad Boy Academy. It's in it's in Phoenix, Arizona. So if you can make the trip, check the check the YouTube. Watch the vidi, make the trip, book your flight, get some lunch, you go visit my boy Craig, and he can turn you into a bad boy. Girls need not apply. No girls can be turned to bad boys. Now, they say, they say the worst that you can get is... Is a gun. Oh. Oh, did, was it something else? No, no, I, I, I just forgot, but okay. Um, so a gun. That's the worst way to be a bad. That's I mean that's like that's like next level shit. Like being okay. a bad boy. Like straight up next level shit. 
get a gun. But when I when I Boom. when I see the gun, I remember yeah. Mummy and Daddy, Mem and Peppa, they say no. They say no. They do. No guns. But so, you're a bad boy. At this point, who who are you gonna listen to? Your 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 parents? No way, man. You make your own decisions as a bad boy. So you're saying if Mem Mem Pep Pep say no, I they say no no. I, I, I don't understand. You go against wishes of mother and father. Yeah, but here's here's the thing. No one's gonna know. Oh. It's a secret. You don't tell him. Hang on. Wait, Martin. Martin, are you okay? Are you are you still here? I'm kind of trembling. Martin, uh, here's the thing. Here, here's what you gotta do. When they go and they come to you and they say, Martin, uh, my son, my my child. I love uh, you so much. I love you so much. The gun is missing. Our gun that we keep for defense of our house and our home, we keep it in a place where it is unknown, but it has gone missing. Do you know anything about this? You just, you don't even say anything. You just shake oh. your head. You shake your head right. as if to say, as if to say no, but don't even give it that much energy. Just shake your head as if to say no, and then they uh -huh. move on. Because, you know what? You've got them fooled. Hmm. Now, we covered... <sighs> Alright. I'm, I'm only just getting my head around this, but backwards hat. Backwards hat, yeah. Jean jacket. Yeah. Now, you don't have to be the worst with the gun, but... No. We, we, say, we say no-no words is... I don't yeah, understand. you could say like, you could say words like piss or uh, damn it. You could say uh, ass. Butthole. Yeah, you could say butthole. You could, but you have Ma to, you could yell Ma it. Hang on, just okay. Scandinavia, uh, Martin, butthole. Yeah. Can you can you say? In the uh, svenska. Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, rövhål. Oh. Okay. That's yeah. brutal. Do you That's hear that? Yeah, it word. is. Odin is uh, weeping. Right. Please, please, Martin, uh, Svenska bad boy training for our Scandinavian audience. Uh, in future episodes, we'll get some Finnish and some Norwegians and some Danske, maybe? Maybe. My so, grandmother's Norwegian. Oh, there you go. Maybe you could get her on. <laughs> but, but please, but please for now, uh, <clears throat> Martin. Uh, Svenska bad boy training for no no words. All right. For bad boys. So, um, so Martin, please. Uh, Dam. Uh, Fan. Uh, Garrett, you go next. Uh, shit face. Uh, vice ansikte. Yeah, that's an advanced. That's a little advanced. Yeah, we don't usually. You know the Gleason School gives you that one. Like that's year two. Okay. Let's st let's go back to simple. Jake, you got a good one. Um. Uh, bitch. Yeah, that's uh, a good one. Slina. Um. Uh, we covered butthole. Let's see. Yeah, I get my butthole. We covered we covered buttholes. We covered the butthole and <sighs> shit face and did we get ass? We no. Oh, ass. Um, that's a good. That's a base. That's a base starter, and you can add on to it. I don't yeah. give a damn about your ass. Yeah, or your butthole. Yeah, exactly. Um, ass in Swedish that would be rov. So I don't. That's kind of a romantic word in Swedish. Uh, not really. <laughs> no, it sounds. No. In, it, the English to the to the trained. Uh, to the trained English ear, it has a, a like a nice, warm feeling to it. So like in, <laughs> it's a bit inviting when you say "ros." How do you say that? Rav, rov, rov. All you all you need is rav. All you need yeah, is exactly. rov. It's almost like a Yoko Ono cover. Rav is all you need. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Martin, please, just to complete uh, Svenska Bad Boy Training One Hundred and One, please. Um, translate I don't give a damn about your ass and your butthole Jag skiter väl för fan i dig och ditt arsle mm. Thank That you, rolls off the tongue Thank you Martin 
And uh, <laughs> thank you, Garrett, for teaching me how to be a bad boy. For sure. And wow, that was good. The way, the way, the way you say "bad boys" is so fucking funny. To, where he teaches us how to be bad boys. Yeah, that was that was kind of the idea. <laughs> you said it. You said it almost like it, like it was like a little bit sexy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes I was going just, for that. Sometimes you just got to try it out and live how you want to live your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Smoke a cigarette. Wow, you bad boy. Yeah. How how can all those funny bits, all those goofs and spoofs, how can they come to a pinpoint? How do they come to a crux? Fanfics, gentlemen. I mean, that's that's what we all love, right? Zach's fanfics. Yeah, that's kind of the backbone of our podcast at this point. Yeah, really. Who? Video games. Bah. Video <laughs> games. Humbug. Get him out of here. Get me. Tell me what what Seinfeld and friends are up to. Let me know what Big Bang Theory is doing. Oh, just you, you know how back in the olden days, before you'd see a free feature presentation, you, you you'd see like uh, a little a cartoon or something beforehand, like back in the olden days in the cinema. Yes. Yeah. Well, like, what if what if what if that what if that uh, cartoon was Pokemon, and what if it was a story told by a deviant, that is my younger brother. And what if that just came out of fucking nowhere while we were talking about the Pokemon to be a master soundtrack? Which we talked about for a fucking half hour, by the way. <laughs> that you were going to recommend a different album, and then we made you recommend Pokemon to be a master. I was going to recommend Miles Davis' Sketches in Spain, which, hey, is a good fucking album. You, should go, you guys should go check it out. I mentioned that I picked up that album in a charity <laughs> shop. Eric goes on for a fucking half hour. <laughs> it's a good soundtrack. <laughs> So call this a matinee, which will lead into um, bigger things. But here is Pokemon Talk with Eric and Zach and Cody, <laughs> our sweet, sweet boy. Hey, you Pikachu! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Track 11, Misty's song. Uh, how did Misty's song go? Do you guys even remember? No, it sucked and I always skipped it. But oh, Eric, okay. you look at me and I look away. I want to tell it's you what I'm feeling. It's because I thought it was going to be a song sung by Misty, and it was some guy singing about Misty. Oh, so it's Brock singing about Misty. No, not even oh. Brock. What? No. There's no, no. fanfic? No. Oh, just, I want a fanfic. The guy singing. About I want a fanfic! How, how he wants to fuck Misty or something. Zach, improv fanfic, go. Improv fanfic with of ten year olds. Misty? Oh yeah, well, that's true. All right, cancel that improv fanfic. <laughs> thank you for the oh, for yes. the thank you for reminding me of this. that goes. As, as Brock stared at her supple <laughs> flat chest, <laughs> she looked up. What's for dinner, Brock? Brock says, "My personal favorite, Brock soup." What's in the soup, Brock? I know, but Pokemon go nuts for it. What do you mean you don't know what's in your soup? Try it first! Turns out that Brock Saman is in the soup. The end. <laughs> <laughs> I see a general theme with your fan fictions, and I'm not saying I'm like against it or anything. I'm just noticing. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's semen. Because <laughs> <laughs> whenever I think of it, like, when I say a fanfic, the first thing that comes to mind is that someone, two characters are just absolutely covered in it, to be honest. <laughs> and that's all I see in my head. And I'm like, okay, but that's the end of the story, but what leads up to this moment? And that's yeah. what gets me going. What are the two characters that are covered in semen in the Pokemon fanfic? I, I assume Misty, and then either Staryu or Psyduck. <laughs> what? It's, it's coughing in James, you idiot. <laughs> 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 All right. Eric? Yeah. What kind of Pokemon are you? Uh, how do I don't you know. do I'm, the things I'm, you do? That's, I'm still trying to figure out how I do the things I do. I'm Martin. trying to let you know my secrets deep inside. I tell you what, that is my favorite track off that album. Once I finally got around to listening to it. See? Martin, what yeah, kind of Pokemon that's... are you? I'm not quite sure, actually. I think I think Martin's about to get ground out by a Marowak. Hey, don't you bother me with a Caterpie. <laughs> I know that Martin gets so excited about Pikachu that he gets a little... How would I say it? Aroused. <laughs> but 
to me, uh-huh. there's nothing more arousing than quality fan fiction about characters from the 90s. Which characters? What would they do? Would it be friends in another wedding episode? No. No, we're above that. We're beyond it here on the Gaming Cult Podcast. What we move to is new heights, new excitement. What I'm talking about is the greatest fan fiction ever written. Are you prepared? In full, uncut, beautifully edited together and voice acted? Oh. I present to you Zach Innes, the cast of the Gaming Cult Podcast in Seinfeld's The Face. Scene one, Jerry's apartment. No, numb the face, George. You don't like it on the face? I don't like it on the face! Why not, Jerry? It just gets in the eyes, that's all. What if I aim away from the eyes? Like, more towards the chin. It's gonna get in the eyes! It's like the aftermath makes a beeline for it. No, Jerry, what if I... Kramer enters the room with a stumble-like fashion. Oh, 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 oh sorry. I, I could come back later. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, if, if, that's, if that's convenient. What's going on here, anyway? You, you shooting a movie? Jerry won't let me come on his face! I don't like it on the face! Why not, Jerry? It's great for the skin! Kramer, that's ridiculous. Oh, uh, I'm coming, Jerry! <laughs> ah, ah, right in the eye! Uh, so we go to black, and then now it is scene two. Scene fades out to Jerry and Elaine in a diner. Scene two, Monk's Cafe. <clears throat> you let him come on your face? I didn't let him. Kramer just busted in and he just did it. Got me right in the eye. The eye? Ah, uh, that stings. Did you at least wash it out? Of course I washed it out. What, am I meant to leave it in there? It's been a while since someone came on my face. Wait, you... you let them come on your face. Well, yeah, Jerry, it's great for the skin. That's what Kramer said! Kramer? How would he know? I don't want to know. Oh, as for the eyes, that's the work of an amateur. I mean, if a man can't aim right... You know what? I... I'm done eating. Uh, I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Scene fades out at Kramer's sperm donation clinic. Scene three, sperm donation clinic. Well, how much do you got here then? I don't know. Maybe a few gallons, but we don't usually allow for such a quantity to be given to one person. Uh, it's my wife. Yeah, yeah, it's my wife. Pardon? My wife. She, uh, she, she really wants kids. A lot of them. Uh-huh. And this is for one person. Uh, no. Oh, my wives. I got plenty, you know, my religion and all. They all want a lot of kids, and there's only so much a man can do, you know? Right. Alright, li listen. How much would it take for you, for your boss, to, uh... Apart from this establishment, you know? I'm, I'm not sure you could afford that. Oh, but I can, and I got an idea. Let me see him, and I can make you all quite wealthy and be worth your while. Kramer gives an exaggerated wink. <sighs> Let me get him on the phone. Here's my number. You tell him to call me. I'm a very busy man. Where's the nearest drugstore around here? Uh, it's uh, right around the corner. Kramer lights a cigar and puts on sunglasses. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Scene fades out to George in the living room with his parents, with Jerry over. Scene four, Costanza household. You came in his eye? That's exactly what he did. J Jerry, please. My son, the amateur. Dad, come on, I... I don't think your father ever came in my eyes. Never, not in a million years. Mom, please, I'm not your son. I don't even know if I have a son anymore. Do you know Frank? Not a clue. Great, Jerry, look at this. Look at what you've done. Jerry turns to George, revealing an eye patch on his eye. Really? You know what? Leave it. Let's go. You know, in the army, I was a crack shot. Oh, Frank. Scene fades to Kramer now opening a new shop front in place of the sperm donor clinic. Cosmo Kramer's Carefree Cream. He stands outside giving and applying test samples to smiling women. Scene 5, Sperm Donor Clinic. Clinic Kramer's Skin Cream Store. I can't believe this. Why would Kramer sell skin creams? Oh, Jerry! What's going on? Look at all this dough. Kramer, what is this? It's business, Jerry. Lots of it. 
I mean this. Picks up a sample bottle. Oh, uh, that. Cosmo Kramer's Carefree Cream. Here, Jerry, try a bit. I'll put a bit on the face. My, my face? Yeah, Jerry, it helps the pores. You'll be glowing. Wait a minute. Jerry looks at the bottle, reading the caution label. Do not apply near eyes. You're sick, Kramer. Come on, Jerry, look at these people! Money doesn't lie. It's working and they love it! The people love it, Jerry! Not if they knew what it was! But they don't, Jerry! That's the beauty! What's a little bit of harmless man jelly every once in a while, you know? Everything, Kramer. This is the worst thing you've done yet. Ah, uh, you'll see, Jerry, you'll see! Pleasure doing business with you. Kramer wanders inside the store, followed by a crowd of people. Scene changes! Elaine is now talking with a male co-worker. Scene 6, Elaine's workplace. So, uh, how's your wife? Don't have one. Hi, uh, play in the field. I, I get it. Get what? Uh, do my pores look blocked or irritated? Uh, no. You didn't even look! Uh, I'm not too sure. Y you know what? How about dinner tonight? Well, okay, I guess. Perfect. Bow, 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 bow. Scene changes. Newman enters Jerry's place. Scene seven, Jerry's place. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Newman. So, Jerry, I hear you've been letting people come on your face. That's ridiculous. Who told you that? Well, I was down at Kramer's skin... Cr really? Kramer? So, Seinfeld, how about it? Get out of here, Newman. Mark my words, Seinfeld. One of these days, I'm going to come on your face when you least expect it. Get out, Newman. <laughs> That was, that was the worst fucking Newman impression. I'm yeah, sorry. <laughs> Newman said he was gonna come on his face when he least expects it. Oh god. Okay. Good okay. Okay. Good job, Kenny. Okay. Uh, um, okay. <clears throat> Scene changes. Elaine is engaged in intercourse with coworkers. Scene eight. Elaine's place. Come on. Right on the face. Cheeks if you can. What? On the face. Don't be shy. All right. If you insist. The co-worker ejaculates on Elaine's face, hitting her in the eye. Ah! My eye! I can't believe this! <laughs> Sorry, guess I'm an amateur. Turns out, man seated behind Elaine and Jerry in the diner was her co-worker. Scene changes- I like that twist. Scene changes to Elaine and Jerry in the diner, both wearing eye patches. Jerry smiles. You too, huh? I hear it's great for the skin. Elaine sips on her coffee, scowling at Jerry. <laughs> Scene changes to Kramer's store. The receptionist of the clinic is now a cashier. Scene scene nine. Sperm donor clinic slash Kramer's skin cream store. Sorry, I need to use the bathroom. Is there one here? Sure, just on the door on the left, next to the facial cleansers. Oh, thank you. The customer heads towards the bathroom. Kramer's in there and has forgotten to lock the door. The woman opens the door of the bathroom to discover Kramer masturbating into an empty tube of skin cream. <laughs> Free shot of Kramer staring at the woman in shock, holding his penis while an ejaculate shot is frozen mid-air, heading towards the woman's face. The skin cream tube has been dropped from from Kramer's grasp. Credits roll. Jerry discusses facials in his stand-up during credits. What's the deal with semen? I mean, whenever you're just using it, it goes everywhere. If you try to do it in the sink, it'll go over the tap handles. I just don't get it. <laughs> you know what, guys? It's a real shame that he didn't like him on the face. Yeah, I, but I hear it's real good for your skin. Will there ever be an episode two, uh, ladies and gentlemen? Our beloved dear listeners, you'll just have to wait and find out. You know what, guys? And even if there's not, appreciate it for what it is. Because we, he, we at the Gaming Cult Podcast, maybe we want to move on to bigger and better things. Maybe we want the Seinfeld The Face episode to be just the beginning. Hmm. Where could we go from there? We don't even need to do Seinfeld. We could have, we could go, we'd write a Friends episode. What kind of Friends episode? How about another wedding episode? Exactly. Really latching onto that idea. But who weds who? Is there a monkey? Is he wearing a waistcoat? Could be. Does Ross marry a monkey? He might. Zach's writing it already. I can hear I him. I can hear him from here. Well, gents, that is it. That That is the Gaming Call Podcast 2012 clip show. We did it? We did it. Wow. I can't believe uh, it. Man, 
I tell you what, it's been an incredible year, and uh, it's you know everyone says that at the end of a year, of um of whatever they're doing, but this is our first year, and it genuinely has been an incredible year. I mean, what we talk about our own dicks for half an hour, and we have been invited to PAX Australia 2013. PAX, PAX. Hey, and you know what? You know what? Brian Abu Chakra, one hundred percent confirmed. For PAX Australia 2013. That's right. Martin, uh, how have you felt this past year? I mean, g- w- what's this been like for you? Well, I'm I'm not really sure what I was expecting uh, in terms of what this would escalate to, but it's been absolutely fucking amazing. That's pretty much all I can say about it. It's nuts. It's, it's nuts. Well, Martin, my friend, I just have to thank you for joining me for this whole year. Yeah, thank you, Jake. It's been hell of a year. Indeed. <clears throat> and Eric, I have to thank you too. Were you going to cry just now? No. I, it it my- sounded like you got, no, it sounded like you got choked up a little bit. It sounded like you were getting a little bit choked up and you were going to go, and, and I just want to say, you guys are really making us happen for the Gaming Hole podcast, but in an Australian accent. Yeah. So like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yo, you know, you bogans is making it happen faster than the, Gaming Cult Podcast. That's my Australian. <laughs> that was probably the worst Australian accent I've oh, ever fucking heard. Pretty good. It was pretty good. <laughs> Clip show, cunts! Clip show! Write to us, Gaming Cult Podcast at gmail.com, facebook.com slash Gaming Cult Podcast. That is our central hub. Twitter at Gaming Cult Cast, at Eric Badua, at Garrett Hunter. Hey, Martin's even got a, a Twitter now. Plug your Twitter, Martin. At Martin underscore GCP. And hey, Zach even got one too. Everyone's on Twitter. It's Just the go. Best one too. Zach's is so good. But he's posted like four fucking times, and I'm so excited. At Zach Innes. We'll see you next time in 2013. All of us, myself, Jake, Martin, Eric, Garrett, and Brian, and hey, maybe even Zach. Who knows? Clip show! Clip show! Clip show! Martin, take us out. Another day is like a new beginning And so today I know that it's a new start I know the bad times are disappearing
I don't think the world's going to end in our lifetime. Am I? Am I weird for thinking that? No. No. I, I, I just want to be old enough to say my children die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zach.